while ago, I took my camera along to my narrowboat neighbour's boat to document him taking out his pump out toilet and replace it with a composting one. But by the time I got there, half of the job, the more interesting part, the pump out toilet removal had already been done. Now, I probably saved you a lot of gross imagery anyway and a lot of smells for myself, but I still think this is gonna be a very useful video and that's why I've decided to share it. I'm Paul Narrowboat Plumber. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install the latest compost toilet. Why have you decided to get rid of a pump out toilet? We came aboard last year within the last lockdown as they actually allowed the rules to change slightly. It was basically coming up to winter. We had an initial pump out, the tank lasts about a month to six weeks depending on how heavy you using it where there's one or two people living aboard. And we got the first pump out done and then the winter set in, the basin started to ice up, the canal starts to ice up and of course straight away um, <laughs> everybody's starting to get 12 volt pumps and 25 litre tanks and um, what are you doing? And they're actually having to empty their effluent tank into a barrel and hump it all the way to the drains to empty it because you can't move the boat. It does have a, an odour to it, which was something that was putting my wife off considerably as well. When you do research, a lot of people complain there's a cost issue to pump out as well, because it's 17 to 20 pounds every time you do a pump out. And so during the winter to keep us going, I actually purchased a small, camping toilet just so that I didn't have to do the barrel thing <laughs> and we could get pump outs when we were available again. We then also had an air lock and a, an air leak on our system so it wasn't emptying our tank properly so straight away my wife hated the whole system so we made a lot of research and decided we wanted to go towards composting because um, it's an environmentally friendly option in the long term. The lead times for a lot of manufacturers went through the roof and it's taken us three to four months to actually get our compost toilet in. Taking this toilet out, the original uh, pump out toilet, was quite a simple straightforward job. Um, disconnect the electrics, cut the pipes, take two or three Jubilee clips off and just very, 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 very carefully take it through the boat inside a big heavy bin liner so that we didn't make a mess anywhere. The tank was a different kettle of fish. It wasn't a massive tank, but it was really strong GRP plastic. I found out it wasn't totally empty. So I had a nightmare that took me a full day to get the tank out. Got everything cleaned up and what have you. And yeah, my wife's already filled it full of rubbish. So there you go, that's the storage. I have unpacked everything because there's quite a lot of packaging. It's probably the best packed toilet I've ever seen in my life. Right, so this is where the old toilet literally came out. There was a, con a control panel box that covered all this. That, this is why this looks a bit untidy. Obviously, I will address all that once the toilet's in. So that was the old water connection. These are the 12 volt electrics. That is what is remaining behind all the boarding, the shower, um, of what was of the waste pipe. I've had to seal and cap that because I can't take the whole shower cubicle out just to remove that piece of pipe. All the other pipe work's gone from under the bed through to the engine room. That's just the last little bit that's left sealed up. No problem at all. That's the uh, splash guard that obviously goes in the urine section, but I'm going to take that out of the way for a minute. And this is the new model compost toilet. Only one real difference, if we're honest, is this lever on the side. And what this lever does is it gives us a built-in modesty cover. So the modesty cover is this new idea that they've built in, whereas the old one, you actually just sat a modesty cover on top and they only charged £35 extra to put that in. It comes with a urine bottle. So we're gonna take that out of the way for the minute. That's the funnel that goes above the urine bottle so there's no splashes or mess inside. And the inner bucket has the stirrer, which I'm sure you've been you've seen before with Foxes Afloat. What I need to do next to actually get to the electrical connection, because really that's the only thing I've actually got to do inside here. Connect the 12 volt electrics that runs the fan, which I'll explain how we fit the uh, filter on afterwards. At the back there's two holes just to secure the toilet to the actual backboard 
or in the bathroom. So there's a finger hole back there. Just pop your finger into that finger hole. Fingers at the front and this just lifts off and juggles out. So that's the modesty or the base that the actual bucket sits on. Uh, and if you want then you can now actually see the stirrer motor and these are the two 12 volt electrical connections that we're actually going to make. Locate the toilet roughly where I want it for the minute and then I'm going to get my wiring ready. When you do the wiring it is simple nobody needs to worry about this. Boating wiring does need to be multi-core wiring. Um, if you don't know what type of wiring is used, basically this is auto electrical wiring. So auto electrical wiring is actually designed and rated for 12 volt systems. Uh, you can order this off the internet um, if you can't get it from actual um, electrical wholesalers or car spares. I have got wire strippers but I tend to find on this 12 volt wiring it's just as easy doing it with a Stanley knife. This is why we twist the wires. If one or two strands break, you've still got an electrical connection with the rest of the strands. So this is where we're going to bring the wires through. So I'm going to keep the two ends that I've cut on the inside. So I'll use the ends that I haven't cut yet to poke through the actual uh, grommet at the other end. A tiny little hole into the rubber just to help the wire go through because the rubber is totally sealed one wire through. Right, there's the second wire. Right, so now I'm going to pull all those through. Right, I'm swapping the um, connector blocks that uh, Compost have put on because I'm using a stronger grade 12 volt wire. That's just because I tend to over engineer things so it's just my way of sort of belt and bracing it. But there's nothing wrong with the connector block that the compost toilet's put on but I just uh, think it's a little bit fiddlier and I'd rather use a better grade connector block. Uh, I'm going to pull my wires through so that I haven't got too much inside. Obviously we've got a lot of spare wire. Now my advice to you will be to make sure you do leave yourself quite a bit of wire because at some point you may wish to pull the toilet out uh, for additional maintenance so I am not going to shove too much uh, back inside the toilet I'm going to leave myself a good 18 inches or so outside the toilet that I can tuck into the bulkhead and secure cut these ends I'm now going to connect on the 12 volt into the boat And if you can hear the stirrer going, can you see the socket turning around? It's for the motor inside and the fan. When the urine bottle is full, the blue light actually lights up on the outer part of that switch. What I'm gonna do is put all the wiring safely inside there. I'm gonna slide that back. The next thing that we have to look at is the carbon filter. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, that is bigger and heavier than I expected. So I've had to slightly adjust my idea on how I mount it. It comes with a seal that we insert into the housing of the filter. And it literally just squishes and pushes in very, very easily. No problem at all. So make sure that's shoved all the way home. We ordered the actual kit for the filter, for the ductwork and what have you. I'm actually only going to use this one single piece because I want to squeeze it in. So I'm just going to adjust where the toilet sits slightly. I'm going to insert this bit into there. Trying to put dry plastic inside a dry rubber grommet is actually extremely difficult. The simplest way is to actually use a plumber's silicon lubricant, just put a little dob on, 
You can also use um, WD-40's silicon spray. See how simple that went in. Basically this just fits straight onto the exit vent off the fan. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move it slightly sideways. The way I'm going to install this is I'm installing that onto there. Aim downwards and I'm going to support it from the underside. Push the toilet roughly into the position I want it. And then I'm going to box this in. The only thing we've now got left to do is put the two mounting screws into the back of the toilet to secure it to the wall. Really tiny screw hole and there'll be one behind here as well. So yeah, it is tight. Right, uh, one little hiccup we've just come across. Because of the new modesty panel, this is actually interfering with the two screw mounting holes because they're actually right up here out the way. I'm not messing around, I'm just going to drill a lower mounting hole through the back. I know compost loose ask you not to drill from the inside but it's up against the wall so I'm not worried about that at all. What we can now do is actually put the bottom plate back in, the stirrer bucket back in and make sure you locate that nut inside the bottom carrier. The liquid bottle into its little seat in place. I'm going to put the cap down the side there so I don't lose it and I don't forget where it is. The last thing to do is the fittings for the toilet seat are already actually on the toilet as we can see here you don't have to worry about those so we're just going to drop the self-closing toilet seat straight onto these two lugs buttoning make sure it's down i'm just going to pop the splash guard back in that's obviously for my wife's benefit so i don't make a mess I'm going to tidy all this back up because, as I said, there was actually a panel there that had the electrical controls in for the old pump-out toilet. So, got a little bit of tidying up to do. Got to re-tidy the actual um, bottom of the carpet up there. When you empty the bucket out of this, the best thing to do is make sure you've actually got the biodegradable bin liner bags. Usually green. If you're really struggling, Aldi do a biodegradable carrier, they only charge 10p for it and it is green once again so you know what you're using. A lot of new marinas are actually starting to look at providing bins to actually put the humanure in. At the minute all the domestic dustbins and waste it is not illegal to put it in there you are allowed to do that but please talk to your marine to actually make sure they're still happy or they've not provided an alternative um, source for that. Canal River Trust have actually basically said they do will not allow it in any of their bins on any of their sites. Now this is up in the air and under discussion until the end of the year. They're saying they're prepared to support all marinas and service stations in actually providing it but at the minute they're not doing it themselves which I think is a very negative approach because this is in the long term one of the most ecological ways of actually dealing with this when you're out on the cut yourself we actually purchase from cotton Poos toilets a spare bin and what have you so we will be carrying that when you're using it if there's two people aboard you're going to have anywhere between five to ten days of actually sort of filling it before you actually use a second bin or you put it into a bag now what is recommended is when you're out on the water is obviously store the bags and the bin in the bow somewhere safe and what have you and then when you come to an appropriate place where you can actually dispose of it then obviously dispose your human your bags in an appropriate bin that you're allowed to do. The urine bottle obviously if you're in a marina or a CRT service point then you can use the LSAN or the sluice to actually dispose of the urine. When you're out on the cut and what have you um, there's no 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 rules about it but obviously what you don't want to do is pour a whole bottle of urine on a footpath or anything like that it's, it's not nice for anybody but there's nothing wrong if you go 
out into a hedge row and you spread it all out at the end of the day you know there's more wildlife sort of doing the same thing out there and to be honest all the nutrients in urine is actually very good for trees and stuff anyway but don't dump it all in one spot because it will just stink of urine then